So I've been speaking to my friend Bernard, who uh, you guys will probably know from the Facebook and the Slack groups within the Beaver Builder community. He's the go-to pods guy. He was really keen to start looking at whether the default Beaver Builder modules or even some of the modules included with the add-on packs can maybe pull data in from other data sources such as pods. And it just so happens that I need to add some testimonials to my Hire Me page on WP Developers. And so I thought I'd give it a go and see what could be done. If you recall, in a previous video, I've shown you how to modify the output of a module so that uh, you can make it look and feel as you need. And we also looked at editing the settings form so you could add extra data in. Uh, and the example I used was the pricing table and adding a, a different image to each column in there. So this was a, um, I, th I thought it would be a bit of a challenge and um, I'd just like to show you how I've approached this and hopefully you'll find some use from it as well. So on the screen you'll see that I have a testimonials widget and it's just the regular uh, Beaver Builder module and you'll see that I've added a couple of testimonials in here. If we just flip back to the back end, you'll see that I have added a pod uh, called testimonial and I've got a few fields in here. And these appear here and I've added a few testimonials in and populated it with content. So if we just go and edit one. So we have, uh, we have the title, which I'm going to use as the person's name. We have the regular content, which is the testimonial itself. We have the organization or the name of the company. We have an image of the person if it's available. I probably won't use that for this demonstration. And we have the logo of the company as well. And so they're just regular pods, regular custom post type in, in uh, WordPress. And let's go and see how we can pull that into the testimonials module in Beaver Builder. Okay, so the first thing is to start writing some code and uh, we'll, we'll just go through it step by step and might make some mistakes on the way, but we'll see how we go. Uh, so I'm writing this code in a custom plugin that I've created, but you can do this in your functions.php file. Uh, so let's go ahead and start by adding a filter using our new favorite filter that we found in the last video. So we'll say add filter and the name of the filter is FL Builder Render Module Content. And this gives us two things. It gives us the content, uh, which is the output of the module, and it gives us the instance of the module itself. So that gives us access to the settings, the fields, everything like that. So that's really helpful. And the first thing I'm going to do is just return that content because it's something I always forget to do. The next thing we've got to do is pull in the library that I mentioned in the previous video. And for those of you who haven't seen that, this is a library that uh, allows us to modify HTML using PHP. And it's called HTML Page Crawler. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to install that using Composer. So uh, go ahead and do that first, review that other video if you need. What I'm going to do first inside this filter is actually make sure that the library exists. So what we can do here is if a uh, class doesn't exist, I just want to return uh, immediately. That's pretty simple. We now know that the library exists. We can now go ahead and start thinking about how we want to modify our content. I think the first thing that we need to figure out is getting the data. Uh, and that's no more complex than a regular uh, WordPress query. What I'm going to do is come down a bit. Uh, I'm just going to put a check in here to make sure that we are. In fact, could I put that up here? Say so if testimonials is not the name of the module. That should be or. I'll just bring this down to another line so we can see. Okay, so let's just, just to recap here, let's delete that first. We're saying if the class for the page crawler doesn't exist, or the module slug isn't testimonials, we're just going to bail out. We're going to return the content back to the filter and let Beaver Builder get on with its job. Now we've done that, we can start thinking about getting the uh, testimonials from WordPress. So what I'm going to do is just set up, I'm not, I'm not going to use WP query, I'm just going to use get post because I think that's all we need for this. So I'm going to set up some args here and, and let's say post per page, let's just do five. There, there isn't quite five in there, but 
Uh, I guess I don't want to flood my testimonials widget if I add more in the future. Uh, of course, we need to specify the post type, which is going to be testimonial. Let's just make sure that we only get published testimonials and not drafts. And I don't know if this is going to help, but I'm going to say suppress filters. We just want content without any filters running. I've had issues with certain things appearing within my content when I'm doing something with a custom Beaver Builder module. I'm just going to try suppress filters. And that's it. That's all we need for this query. And if I create a new variable here, and say post array, we're simply going to run get posts and pass in those arguments. So the first thing we'll do is just check out what data we've got. Get back over to the front end. There are better ways of doing this, but uh, for the purpose of this, we should just be able to see what we need. Let's uh, use the inspector and break it down. So you can see we've got an array of four items, which sounds about right, because we have four testimonials. We have things like the post ID, um, we have the post content, the post title, which is the person's name. And I think that's all we need. If you recall, the images are in pods. So we're going to use the post ID, which we have here, to query uh, the pods custom fields. Back in the editor, so if we want to be belt and braces, we can say if the post array is empty, i.e. there are no posts, then we again return the content back to the filter. We are now ready to start writing the markup for this module. We'll loop through the posts and spit out a testimonial with all of the other fields included. Now, in this instance, I think it's a good idea to roughly follow the default testimonials module. So let's just jump across to there in the Beaver Builder plugin and have a look to see how that's been structured. And we're just gonna go into the frontend.php and see what's going on. You'll see here that we have the kind of outer div, we have the heading, which is an h3. So that's this title here. So we know where we are here. And we then have another div, FL testimonials. And this is where Beaver Builder starts looping through and spitting out the individual testimonials. What we need to really think about is keeping stuff inside this div. And the reason I say that is because there's a bunch of jQuery stuff that's running to make the slider work. I would assume it's going to be attaching, oh, there we go, it's attaching to the FL testimonials div and then it's invoking a BX slider instance on there. So what we're going to have to do is make sure that we keep this div within our custom output. So let's just bear that in mind. Now what I like to do is use an output buffer for when we're outputting dynamic content within HTML and it allows me to write HTML a bit more freely. So what I'm gonna do is just create an empty variable called post output. We'll use this variable to put the contents of our output buffer in once Beaver Builder or once PHP or WordPress has looped through and uh, created each individual testimonial. So let's just start that output buffer and let's say post output equals OB get clean. So everything that we do here is going to be added to the output buffer and once it's calculated it will store it in the post output variable and that's when we can start using the HTML page crawler library to inject that into the Beaver Builder module. Now that's done let's start building out the markup and as we know we need a fl hyphen testimonials div. So that is going to be our wrapper for all of the individual testimonials that the, that the slider jQuery will attach to and uh, turn into a, a fade or a slide effect. So let's think about what we need to do. We have an array of posts here. The most obvious thing is to start a for each loop uh, using this as the source and we will start outputting stuff as we need to there. So now inside here we have access to each individual post and we can do what we need. If you recall, we have access to post content. And for now, I'm just going to spit that out and we'll build on that from there. Before we go any further, I'm just going to pop back to the front end file of the testimonials module and see what we've got in there. This is the outer wrapper. We know about that. That's the one that jQuery will attach to. And 
Then inside there, we have this individual testimonial. Now, I don't know if we need this specifically, but there's no harm in just copying this and embedding our own content within this div in our custom output. So let's go and grab that and pop that there. And then what I'm going to do just to start with, just so we can see something on the page, is grab the post content. And we won't see anything just yet. In fact, I'll go over there and we should just see the same. And the reason for that is that we're not quite using the PHP library uh, to embed this content uh, into the output of the module. Let's just go uh, and get that done first, and then we'll revisit the actual markup and add other things like the logo, the person's name, and everything like that. What we need to do, if you recall, we have access to the content, and uh, that's what the filter is giving us access to. So I'm going to come down here and just say content equals new HTML page crawler passing in the content. And the reason for that is that we can now manipulate this. And after we've uh, put our custom output in there, we, we can then resave it. So uh, we could give it another name and return that back to the filter, but this is a little bit cleaner. If you saw the previous video, you'll see how we use this filter method, which allows us to look through a bunch of HTML and find a specific element, either by the class or by the element name. So in this case, we know that we're looking for FL testimonials, and that's the wrapper div that we saw earlier. And what we can simply do here is use another method called replace with, and we can just pop our, our new custom output in there like so. And we simply then run the save HTML method, and that's it. Let's go and see what we've done. So you see here that the content's changed. This is coming now from our CPT, and uh, that is the post content. If we look in here, we have Brian Dean from Backlinko, and he's saying they get the job done right the first time, every time. And you'll see that on the screen here. So I think that's the hard bit done. Uh, we can now go back to the code editor and start adding a few more of the fields in. and. And after that, we'll start to look at some other options that we can also include that might be useful. I haven't quite figured out how I want these testimonials to look yet. And I won't include that in this video because otherwise it'll get very long. And I'm not a designer, so you'll get very bored very quickly. But I'll just get the information onto the page so you can see how I have done that. So I think what I'm going to do is just create another div up here. And I might create another div here. Testimonial is a very hard word to spell when you're on camera. Testimonial content, and we can put that in there like so. And then we need one called details. And that's where we'll put the company name, person, uh, stuff like that. So let's figure out how we can get the image in here first. If you recall, uh, our testimonial has been created in pods, and that's that's where we need to get the information from now. And pods provides a few helper methods that allow us to get that information out. So uh, I'm pretty new to pods. I might be doing this totally wrong. I'm sure, Bernard, if you're watching this, you'll, uh, you'll be laughing a little bit, but let's see how I get on. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a temporary variable called image field. And I found a method called pods field, which I think I have to use to first get the field information, and then we pass that to another method in a minute to actually output the image. So we need the pod, the name of the pod, and in this case, it's just testimonial. That's, that's the name that I gave it when I set up uh, that custom post type. It then wants the ID of the post that this field is associated with. And as we're looping through all of our testimonial posts, You'll remember perhaps that we have an ID field. So we can pass that in there. So we're getting pods information from each post by its ID. And then the final parameter that we need to specify is the custom field name. And for now, I'm just going to stick with the logo. So now we've got an image field, which is pulling from the testimonial with the ID from the current loop post, and we're getting the the logo from that. 
So down here in the testimonial image, we can use another method called pods image. And I'm echoing this. I'm not quite sure if that's the right thing to do, but let's see what happens. Uh, and in, in this case, we're going to pass in the image field that we got earlier. And in fact, I think we can specify size here. Okay, cool. So we've got pods image, image field, and then medium size. So let's see what that has done. There we go. So we've got the logo outputting like so. Yeah, and some are different sizes. So that's going to be fun to style, but I'll deal with that when I'm not recording. So there's just a couple of other bits of information that we need to include. One is the person's name, and one is the organization. So I'm just going to create a paragraph here. And the person's name, if you recall, is the post title. So I'm just going to output that like so. And then another paragraph below, we're going to get the company name or the organization name. And that again is a pods uh, field. So let's just see how we can do that. I'm, I'm using echo again. I think that's the right way of doing it. And I'm more familiar with uh, advanced custom fields. And if you use the field, it echoes it for you. Uh, if you use get field, you have to echo it yourself. So I'm not quite sure what pods does in this case, but for now, I'm just gonna echo. Again, we have to specify the type of pod, which is a testimonial, pass in the ID and specify the custom field name. So let's head back to the browser. And you'll see here we have cat chambers from Mathalan retail. So I think here we've done the hard bit. We're now outputting data from the CPT instead of from the module itself. And that's quite cool because uh, if we accidentally delete this module, which is something I've heard people say is an issue before, then we don't have to re-input everything we can simply re-add the testimonials widget and um, and that data will come back. So that's that's a really nice thing. It's, it allows a bit more flexibility. And of course, it allows you to add this in lots of places on your site and it will all be reading from the same data. That said, we do currently have a little bit of a problem uh, and I'll show you what that is now. Let's go ahead and edit the testimonials module and you'll see that the options appear on the right. I'm using Beaver Builder uh, version two and we've now got this nice pinned uh, settings UI, which I really, really love. Let's head to the testimonials tab. And you'll see that we still have our previous testimonials in there. If I was ever creating this for a client, I would find this a little clunky. I wouldn't be happy delivering this to them. They would see their old content or even the option to add a testimonial here but it wouldn't ever appear on the front end because we've overwritten that. So for me, there's a bit of a disconnect there. So what I'm going to do is uh, modify this settings form again, and we'll use another filter to do that. And we will hide these, these options here and give the user an option to specify whether they want to read from the CPT or if they want to specify their own testimonials manually. 